This tutorial is going to show you all the steps necessary to make your own Bezier Curve Interpolation node in Softimage ICE. What this node will allow you to do is input four point coordinates, and as you move a slider between 0 and 1, the node will output a curved interpolation based on the input points that you provide. Now I'm here at the Bezier Curve Wikipedia entry because they do a nice job not only of explaining the origin of the curve and how it works mathematically, but they have a nice little animated image here and this is more useful for us for developing how we're going to make this curve interpolation work using Softimage ICE. So if we look at this animation and we think of it in terms of point positions and particles which is what we're used to dealing with in ICE as this T value is animating between 0 and 1 and that could be our slider as we change its value between 0 and 1 what's happening is we've got one point on this green line here that's moving from P0 to P1. The second point of the green line is moving from P1 to P2. And then the third point is going from P2 to P3. So each one of these points on the green is basically interpolating at a constant speed between two points. Now if we take the results of the, that first set of interpolated points and then we do the same thing. We interpolate from this first point to the second point, and the second point to the third point. That's what's generating the blue line. And then we do it one last time between the two points of the blue line, and that's what's generating the finished Bezier curve. So now let's reproduce this exact interpolated effect in ICE. So here we are in an empty scene in Softimage. We're going to start from scratch. I have an ice tree open and I have my wiki page with the animated explanation of how a Bezier curve works. And we're basically going to set up something that emulates this animation here. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a null and I'm going to name it P0, set it to rings and make them kind of smallish and position these in a layout similar to the P0, P1, P2, P3 we see in the animation there. So if I duplicate this, P0, P1, P2, P3. Next thing I want is an empty point cloud and for that I'm going to bring that into my ice tree, create a non-simulated ice tree, and I want to add a single point to that tree. So if I do an add point node here, and a single 3D vector inputting into the positions. That gives me a lone point at the origin. Now I need to bring these four points into the ice tree. If I F3 with them selected and drag in their selection into the ice tree, I can distribute 3, 2, 1, 0. And I need their global point positions. So I can get a get data node and plug the output name from P0 into that and explore in the kinematics global position and that gives me the global point position for P0. So I can copy, paste, paste, paste and just plug in some names and that's giving me the global point positions for all of my four points. So the first thing I want to do is figure out how to generate this first green point that's moving between P0 and P1. Well, the quickest way for me to do that is to grab a linear interpolate node and interpolate between P0 and P1. And if we want to actually look at that, I need to get a set data node, plug that in, and create a dummy attribute. I'm going to call it self.viz for visualize plug my linear interpolate result and right click to show the vector. And this is giving me a vector that's going from the lone point at scene origin to P0. And if I move my blend in the linear interpolate between 0 and 1, we are getting the result of this initial green point moving between P0 and P1. At this point I can copy and paste that linear interpolate node and grab P1 P2 and then plug that result in and show the value and if I blend between those two that's giving me the second green point that's interpolating between P1 and P2 so it should follow if I paste another linear interpolate and plug in 
P2 to P3, that's going to give me this third green point. So this is where things get kind of fun. The result of P0 to P1 is this green point, and then P1 to P2 is the second green point. Well, if I do another linear interpolate between both of their results, that's going to give me this first blue point. And same thing, if I do another linear interpolate between those two, that's going to give me the second blue point. So we do that, we do that. And then last but not least, I want to interpolate between these two blue points. And so that's just paste the linear interpolate one more time. And now I want to do all the interpolations all at once. So to do that, I'm going to grab a scalar node and I'm going to run it through a pass through and plug this into each and every one of my linear interpolate nodes so that I can drive all of them from a single slider. And let's see. What I'm expecting as I move this from 0 to 1 is I want to see my vector move along the same curved path that we're seeing here with this red curve. So as I go from 0 to 1, we are indeed getting a Bezier interpolated curved path for those four points. So for the last step here, I'm going to turn this into a compound. And I'm going to grab a pass through and put it on the first, second, third, and fourth point. And now if I just select this entire kind of pyramid shape of the guts of what's doing this interpolation and do create compound, I've got the compound that I need, but I'm going to have to swap some points around. I need to swap the first and second. And then I want to move my scalar all the way down to the bottom. And let me just check. And I need to move the third up to the first. Check one more time. There we go. So go back in and name this P0, P1, P2, P3, and blend. And we can call this compound Bezier, I'll call it Bezier 4 interpolate. Now you can see all we would have to do if we wanted to make a three-point interpolation would be to remove one of these rows up kind of the bottom of the pyramid. And if I wanted to add a fifth point to this one, all I would need to do is keep copying and pasting those linear interpolates until we were res resolved down to a single result at the end. You also could set this up as an array where you have variable inputs and the, the array basically calculates enough times that it resolves down to a final value. And that is how you would set up a uh, Bezier interpolate node in Softimage ICE. I'll be back in a moment to show you a cool visualization trick. So now that we have this interpolate node set up, let's try feeding more data through it than just a single interpolated value. I can grab an, a build array node and plug the scalar into it just so that it knows what it is. And then if I right click on that and insert a couple of ports after, I can set some values. So uh, I'll leave value 1 at 0 and value 2 I'll set it 0.25, value 3, 0 0.5, value 4, 0.75, and value 5 at 1. You can see that for each value I put in there, it's generating a new vector that's pointing to its interpolated result along the curve. Well, you can build your own compound, and I already have one in my library, uh, that creates an incremental array. However many values you, you put into it, it just generates an array with even distributions of amounts between those values. So if I put in 100, I'm getting 100 even units, but you can see that this is starting to draw a much fuller curve. I could put in a thousand, and then we get pretty much a solid block. And as I start moving my 
points around, you can see this is definitely a Bezier interpolated curve. And if I go to a user view, it works in 3D space. It's not just a two-dimensional effect. Um, but one of the cool things that ICE does is it recognizes when you're giving it an array of input data and it introduces a new visualization for you where uh, if I show my value properties, I don't need to show vectors anymore. I can use lines. And what lines will do is basically just draw the result as a line. And this is probably what you want to do when you want to visualize the curves that you're generating in your scene. So we find ourselves ending where we started, back in the Wikipedia page entry about the Bezier curve. And you can see now how we went from a simple animated drawing that represented a concept. We reproduced that same concept in the ice tree and we developed something useful from that. So go out and do some really cool stuff with your Bezier interpolation nodes and I hope you found this helpful. That's all for now.